tutorial, uh, just follow the previous one. I will talk a little bit more about the lighting system in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, so compared to Twinmotion, what is actual unique features uh, you can control. The first one I want to talk uh, quickly is about a daylighting system, uh, which include the sunlight and the sky, right? Which is quite different uh, from Twinmotion. So whenever you bring a Twinmotion file in, it carry in all the artificial lights, right? The LED lights, the neon lights, spotlight, point light, whatever light you created as artificial lights. But it does not carry in uh, a sky uh, light and sunlight. So that's the reason in Unreal, when you start create a new level, you have this option to create an empty level. Uh, if you recall in the last tutorial, we create an empty level, then we bring in the twin motion model. And this empty level actually already contained a basic uh, daylighting system, or called a sunlight system. Okay, so here, if you actually take a look at the, uh, if I turn off my twin motion file, which is the sub D, right? If I turn it off, you can see whatever left is the original template provided by the default Unreal, right? On this template, there is actually a quite a few uh, uh, actors. Uh, is really, really handy. The first one is this really nice cloud system. Uh, if you look at the cloud, is actually mo moving, changing. It also has some default um, actors called uh, exponential height fog. You don't really have to do anything. It's basically calculate uh, the fog effects based on the distance to your camera. Uh, it's, it's really nice. There's also like a post-processing volume. You don't have to worry about it neither. So volumetric cloud, this is the one I just mentioned. Uh, you can see the cloud, really nice. Uh, it's moving, it's animated. Among those, uh, you can see there is an actor, um, I believe it's called, um, let me just search. Oh, sun, sun and Sky. Yeah, that's the one. If I turn off Sun and Sky, you can see everything disappeared, right? So this is kind of the default sunlight system in Unreal 5. Just like Twinmotion, it has its own sunlight system. Unreal Engine 5 has it. If I select this Sun and the Sky, right? And under the properties, the details, if you drag down the properties, you can see a lot of controls here. Latitude, longitude, time zone, right? North, off-site. Uh, so this basically can give you the control on the position of sun. You can also go to the date to see month, day, right? So this is really nice. Uh, you can define this precisely. So for instance, let me just turn on my uh, basic model. For, for instance, I want to change uh, the, uh, the time, right? Right now is a 19.5, so that means a seven and a half, right, in the afternoon. So that's the reason it looks like a you know, late afternoon, early evening. But if I change this to 12, right, I basically change the whole daylighting system to noon. You see it's really bright. Right, it's super uh, straightforward. You can change it to 20, it's 8 p.m. Of course, everything is dark, right? So you can play these values until you find uh, a correct time. I will choose maybe 7 p.m., so that will be 19, right? You got a little bit orange kind of color from the sun. So this is how UE5 control the sun and the sky. If you do want to dig into this actor, uh, this is actually called a blueprint actor. And here I can edit the sun and the sky. You can actually see the script control the logic of this system. Uh, so it has these you know, basic elements, and for each element, you have certain controls. Okay, 
So that is the power of Blueprint Unreal Engine. Everything is transparent. You have the full control on the things you want to manipulate. Right? We don't really have to do this. I just want to let you know, uh, in the future, if you want to create your own sky system, uh, you can do it uh, by using the template. You can duplicate, you can manipulate the script. OK, I think that is the basic uh, sky system uh, in Unreal. And then let's talk quickly about other lights. You know, the artificial lights we transferred from Twin Motion, right? So here, if I you know take a look at this, is a light from Twin Motion, if you recall. And um, in this light, it has these basic values, right? It basically called uh, temperature, uh, casting shadows, light colors, intensities. Uh, is the unit is lumen. Right, so it's really, really nice. Uh, what else I think I want to see? Um, I think that is the basics. But in the future, if you do want to control the, for example, IES texture or the profile, does everybody understand what is this means, IES? All right. IES basically is a, is a light profile for all kinds of you know, artificial lights. So here, if you really search the IES, you can see here are the different profiles. Uh, if I do the browse, right, carried in from uh, Twin Motion. If you are interior design, you need to know more about it, right? For architects, it's okay. We don't have to <laughs> be the expert. So the lights will have a different distribution patterns, right? If you think about LED light here, or you know neon light, or the spotlight, they behave very differently. How they travel across the space, what which angle they have a concentrated high intensity, how do, do they fade out, right? How the light intensity decay over distance is all different. Um, I don't want to talk too much about it, but this is the library carried in from Twin Motion. Okay? So in the future, if you want to create your own light in Unreal, you know, you can start with a basic light, then you can assign the IES profile to those lights, okay? So if you don't want to go back to Twin Motion, you can directly construct from scratch in Unreal. So I'm not really worried about it. I just want to show maybe a quick manipulation on the intensities, right? This is off the default, and the default intensity is whatever this number is. You can click Reset, so it's reset to the default. So for some reason, if you want to you know, make this pretty bright. I can type 10 times brighter than that. Uh, then maybe I will show a very late evening sunlight. Uh, so you can, you, can see the, you can see the result. OK, so sun sky, I will change the time to 8 PM, maybe. So it's 20. Right, it's pretty dark now. And you can see this light profile start to make sense. Right, because it has a pretty high intensity. And here, if you do want to make more dramatic, 400. So that's the light is definitely, um, you know, being maximized. And here, if I move, you can see the. Oh, maybe let's just move the light out. You can see a little bit easier. Right, you can see the light distribution across the space. I can also rotate. That makes sense? So this is how you control the artificial lights in Unreal. Uh, by control the intensities, color. Um, if you want to reset, right, you don't want to mess up the number, you can click this reset button at the end. This is reset to the default. Okay. So my suggestion is, it uh, depends on what you want to present, right? You could do a very, you know, like an evening light uh, with, you know, the sun going down already, and everything here is artificial, right? You can definitely do it. Cool. Um, I think that's that's how you uh, manipulate the twin motion light. If you want to create your own lights. Uh, in Unreal, uh, this is a way, just go to 
you know, place actors. If you don't have this menu open, you can go to add, right? And here you can do place actor panel, or you can do lights and, you know, pick the lights directly, either way. Uh, I will make the act actor panel visible, uh, so it's easier you can see. There's all sorts of lights, uh, point light, spotlight, rec rectangular lights, skylight, HDRI, backdrop light, sun and a sky system. Okay, so I will just do a really basic one, point light. So bring the point light in, right? So you start to see it's casting the shadows, uh, really nice. If I use a W, I can move it, right? So that's how you create a light by yourself not rely on two motion at all, right? And here I can control the light color. Let's give purple, uh, okay. Intensity, I will maybe do two, right? So you can play with these values and you see the result immediately. Okay, um, I think that's, that's how you create your own lights, right? Um, what else I want to cover? Um, yeah, I think that's that's it. Uh, this is the you know just some basic stuff. Uh, but you know in the future for the IES right profile, if you want to find a new IES profile, you can you can do this way. Uh, so first, I will pick up my motion lights right so here in the in the properties you can see the IES 06 so here if I browse I can see the library right? make sure you have the library first or you can remember the path right this is a pretty long engine plug-in to motion content library lights common right if you know this path then you pick up a profile you like. Then you go to your lights, right? Let's make the content browser always visible. Uh, I will pin this. Where is the oh docking in layout? Okay, so I pick up this IES profile. Then in my point light, right in the properties, you have to go all the way find this profile. Right now is a void. Right. This is called IES Texture Profile. So if you click this tiny button, this is called Load Selection. Right, You basically load the selected IES profile into these new lights. This tiny button called Load, a uh, use selected asset. Right, So you successfully create a point light. Pretty nice. Uh, also, another trick, if you're holding out and move, you can duplicate. Is this the same as Rhino? I forgot. You know, select, right? Holding out and you move, you make a duplication, right? So for all the new lights, you can, you know, have those values you can play independently. Cool. Uh, attenuation, um, well, I think this is one you, you guys can definitely figure out by yourself. It's pretty straightforward, right? Attenuation means how far the lights can, you know, tra tra uh, travel across the space. Uh, you can make it decay really quick or slow uh, by manipulate attenuation radius. You might also consider, you know, some lights you want to rotate. Right. If it's a point light, just make sure you know the orientation make makes sense, right? Based on the IES profile. Cool. All right. I think that's enough for the lights. The basic. I will leave the rest for you. You know, spotlight, rectangular lights. You can figure out by yourself. All right. Questions so far about lights. All right, 
So maybe let me talk really quick uh, how to control the lights on, on the off by blueprint. Well, this could be something really fun. So now if I play, uh, let me make the day a little bit bright. Um, so sun sky, let's make uh, 7 o'clock maybe. Seven and a half. I think this is the best. Okay. So it's kind of like a late afternoon, right? So now if I play, of course I have my robot right here, right? Uh, and if I get closer to the entry lobby, you see the light is on. Okay? So really simple blueprint script. Uh, you can make the uh, robot interact with the lighting, uh, so it will trigger the lights, okay? So I think this may be something you want to do in your, in, your, in your final project. If you're far away, then the light is off. If you think about a smart building kind of situation, uh, this could make sense, all right? So let me talk really quick how I made this interaction. Uh, the first thing is you need to have a light, right? So right now I have this point light called point light entry. Um, you can double click, you can change the name, it doesn't matter. So this is called point light entry. I also create uh, this one, this is a trigger box. Okay, so in Unreal, uh, if I just go to the, you know, the basics, you can see trigger box is one of the actor available here. Uh, or you can just search trigger box if you can't find it. Trigger box, or trigger, not tiger, <laughs> trigger box, all right? Uh, then you can drag the trigger box uh, into, your, into your level, okay? So this is the trigger box. Uh, then you can change the scale, change the lo location, uh, use, uh, you know, WER, all right? You can change the uh, scale. So let me talk a little bit, what is trigger box? Basically, trigger box is an invisible zone, allow you to interact with the blueprint. So if the character walk inside the trigger box, the trigger box will be triggered, right? Then you can tell uh, the, some other object to respond. Right? So there's a trigger, there's an action, okay? Trigger and action, so keep that in mind. Uh, then, right, in my level blueprint, uh, so if you recall, uh, the way you can open level blueprint is right here. You can have a script uh, to turn on, turn off the light, right, based on the trigger box. So if I open the blueprint, I already did something here. Uh, I will explain a little bit. The first script, uh, this is called event begin play, right? So that means whenever you play the game, this thing will be fired, right? So at the beginning, I will turn off the point light entry into hidden. So at the beginning, the light is not on, right? It's just a default off uh, at the beginning. So the way you can bring this actor into the, you know, blueprint uh, environment is just very easy, just like Rhino. If you select this actor, right? So here in, you know, kind of like Grasshopper, you can right click, you can create a reference, right? This is how you communicate through Blueprint to that light in your level. Just right click, create a reference, okay? As soon as you bring this light in the blueprint, then you can do something, right? So one action you might already know is a hidden. So I want to cite this actor hidden in game. And I check this, you know, option, make it hidden, right? And then you want to link the event begin play to this action. So when the, when the event fire, these lights, right, this light will be turned off. Pretty cool. All right. 
So for instance, if I want to turn off multiple lights, I can just reference all of them here, right? So at the beginning, they all turn off. That's step number one. Step number two uh, is I want to use a trigger box, right? To turn on, turn off the light, depends on the proximity to my robot. So this is a really nice script. Uh, so first thing you have to select the trigger box right, in your level. Then you go to the level blueprint. Uh, if you right click, you can see there is a option here is add event for trigger box number one. Right? And here you can add collision uh, when actor begin overlap. So you can do that which is one already did okay you can repeat you know add event for trigger box number one collision i can add actor end overlap right so when one will be triggered when you get in one will be triggered when you get off right so as long as you have these two um triggers right then you can add very similar action here you know, the first one is when you get into the box, the point light will be turned off. Uh, turned on, sorry, because the hidden is, is uh, not selected. So this will be turned on. If you get off the trigger box, right, the lights will be turned off. Really simple. Okay. So I think that's it. Uh, so let's do a test. Compile. When you play, when you get closer, right, the light is on, get off, the light is, you know, turned off. That's a really basic blueprint script. You can control the lighting. And you can control multiple lights as well. You know, if I want to make, uh, maybe I want to make these lights, right, be controlled by the blueprint as well. This light, let's make it as green color. Um, let's make the intensity a little bit higher, maybe 10. Okay. So this is called point light. Uh, maybe let's rename it, just make it easier. We can, we can identify. It's called point light green. Okay. So here, back to my uh, level blueprint, right? I can right click with a reference to point light green. Then I want to turn off this guy as well. I think if you're holding shift, right, both lights can be loaded as a target. So they will be turned off. And here I will do the same. Uh, control C, Control V. I wonder if I can just simply, you know, Turn off both lights. Holding shift. Yeah, shift is a way you can add multiple input. All right. So have this trigger box turn off both lights. So let's compile and play. All right. So now if I get closer, you see that green light is on as well. Did you see that? Yeah. So you have both lights being turned on. Right? That's really easy to do um, just by a simple script. Okay? So in the future, if you don't want to get yourself confused, I would recommend uh, this is good for all the programmers. Uh, make sure you comment or tag your script. So here if I make a selection and then choose C, I can comment. This is turn off at beginning. You can add some comments, right? The same practice you probably already learned in Grasshopper. Right? Make sure you're always adding a tagging, a comments. So after you know another year, you go back, you'll still remember the logic. Cool. All right, this is basics. Um, maybe I will show you one more. Is you know if you have the two lights, you would, you don't want them turned on at the same time. Maybe the second one will delay, you know, two seconds. 
you can you can still do it. Um, I will I will just show you really quick. So if you type a delay, I can delay I don't know one second, right? After that, then I will choose hide. Well, I will actually do this. Um, I will delete the green light, and then I will add the green light one more time with the reference. Right. So for this green light, I will turn off by hidden. Okay, and I, you know, connect that. Okay, so the logic is the first light will be turned off, right? After one second, the green light will be turned off. Yeah, I think that logic would work. So I would do the same for, you know, uh, for this part as well. So there is a delay. I would delay for one second. Uh, then I will set the hidden. And this time is yes, so it's invisible. And I will connect that. Okay, so the green light will delay for one second when you get in, get out of from the zone. So let's do a test. Compile and play. Right, so here the robot I got in. Yeah, see, after one second, that green light is on. If I get off, that light is has a little bit delay. Do you see that? Right, the green light is delayed. So the logic here again is, you know, if you have a smart building, maybe you have different zones, right, or you have different lightings. So really depends on what exactly you wanna you wanna you know interact with. Uh, you can make this lighting uh, behave uh, any way you like. So let's play one more time. I you see that link blue ones off after one second. Pretty cool, right? So I hope this is something you learned uh, a little bit beyond uh, tree motion, is you are able to program really complicated interactions with your environment, and you can use it as a way to, to demonstrate your idea. Okay, um, let me save the file. I think that's that's all I want to demo today. Um, yep, let me stop the, well, let's do one more. <laughs> Maybe the skylight. I think this could be fun. I don't know. Uh, let's see if the skylight would behave the same. Yeah, see, if you turn off the skylight, yeah, it's a little bit odd. Uh, the, the cloud is still there. <laughs> um, but all, all the sunlighting is, is gone, okay? So maybe you can play with this later. If you do want to reference, for example, the skylight, right, into the, into the system, into the blueprint, uh, you can still do it. Uh, you can create a reference to the skylight, and then you can turn off the skylight uh, if that's the, the thing you want to play. Okay, so I will leave that to you. Uh, and the two All right, so here's a, a quick follow-up about the sky <coughs> system using Blueprint. I guess instead of turning off and on, I like to control the clock, uh, the time. I think that will be fun. So first, uh, here if I just type sky, you can see the sun sky system in um, UE5. And there is a value here available called, um, if you go all the way down, uh, solar time. Uh, so this is a variable, I guess, we need to uh, find a way to communicate through blueprint. So back to the level blueprint, uh, I will do something. Uh, so first, um, I will get rid of all the old script, uh, so you not get confused. Uh, if you recall the old script, we have two lights, uh, green light and another light, and the green light will be turned on with one second delay. 
So I guess my idea is instead of using the same trigger box uh, you know, to control lights, uh, artificial lights, I maybe want to create another trigger box uh, to control the sky. So uh, I will go to drag a trigger box here. Um, maybe I will just put the sky trigger box uh, near the ending point of the ramp. Uh, so just make it a little bit large. Uh, so you know as soon as a character is stepping inside uh, this large trigger box, uh, something gonna happen to the sky. Uh, so just wanna make it large enough. Okay, so it's right here uh, near the end point uh, of this ramp. And I will give the name uh, for this trigger box, let's call it trigger box sky. Okay, so to make it easier, we can uh, recognize. Then in um, the level blueprint, I'm going to right click, right? Then I will go to add event for trigger box two, which is the one we just uh, renamed to trigger box sky. So collision, I will add one for begin collision, right? You can see this right color event. And I will do another <coughs> with a collision and overlapping, okay? Uh, so both of them is triggered uh, through the trigger box, right? The trigger box sky. Then I will go ahead uh, to load the sky system. Uh, so sun sky is the actor. Uh, in, if you're using F, uh, you can actually see this is the object, uh, or this is the actor right there. Uh, so I will right click, create a reference to sun sky, right? Uh, so you create a connection across uh, the blueprint to the level, uh, level thing. And then here we need to access to the solar time. The nice thing in blueprint in Unreal is if there is a hierarchy, uh, you can just type the name solar time, then it's automatically detect uh, the possible variables associated with it. Uh, so really, really smart. And here I wanna set the solar time. Okay, set solar time. So if you're not sure what's exactly going on here, is you see the solar time is one variable here, right? Under the hierarchy of the sun sky. Uh, in the future, if you want to dig into sun sky, you can right click, add it, you can open its blueprint, you can customize. But right now we just need to uh, know 19.5 uh, is the current default, right? So I will <coughs> set the time to 19.5, right, so this is the default time, okay, and I will control C, control V to paste, and then I want to set another one, um, so this one I want to probably set as, uh, I don't know, um, 12 o'clock at noon, okay, it's also the target, All right, so I have the sun sky able to, you know, set both time. Then I need to consider how I'm gonna trigger it, okay? So I wanna do this way. As soon as you um, step inside uh, the trigger box, actually we should you know, put this one on the bottom, right? As soon as you begin overlapping, I will change the time to day, right? It's a daytime, no. As soon as you get out of this trigger box, then I set the time to evening, which is uh, seven o'clock, seven and a half o'clock. Give a comment, this is called sky control. All right, then we compile and we can run, take a quick look. So by default is a 7 p.m. Um, in the evening, uh, you see the sky is kind of orange, but as soon as I step to the end of this ramp, it triggered uh, the sky uh, to the noon. It has auto exposure, it adjusts the brightness, uh, so you see that is a daytime, okay? Then if I move up, as long as I get out of this end point, uh, then you see the sky became uh, 7 p.m. again, okay? So this is how um, this is adjusted. Uh, just keep in mind, by default, uh, the sky system has a uh, fade in, fade out effects. Uh, so it's kind of like a little bit slow to change the 
the lighting, so you have to be a patient. But as soon as you get here, it's kind of in the evening. So if you want to see the daytime, you have to go down to the bottom, um, then you'll see the daytime. Okay? So that is the quick way you can customize uh, the, uh, the lighting condition based on the trigger box. Um, if you like, you know, this could be done with a much easier way. Uh, maybe you want to make the trigger box really big uh, into the, you know, uh, maybe the second level. So I will just make it really big. Right. So here uh, I will make the, the zone a, li a little bit larger. Okay, so this will be the, the zone. Uh, as soon as the characters snap in, uh, you will see the lighting change. Uh, so I'll make this level a little bit larger here. Maybe a little bit closer to the starting point. Okay. Also make this one higher, right? So this will be the entire trigger box for the daylighting. So now let's play. Right. So here everything is at night. But here if I jump to the second level, boom, you'll see the daylighting show up. Right. And here I can actually go in. As long as I'm not get out of this zone, uh, the, the daylighting will be out. Okay. But if I step out, then it becomes evening. Right. Take one or two seconds uh, to adjust the daylighting system. Uh, but now you see this is kicking as a day, uh, as an evening light. And if I go to the entry lobby, I can still turn on this light. And one second later, you see the green light show off. And green light show off. Okay? So that's the basics about how to adjust uh, the skylight system uh, using the blueprint. Uh, just keep in mind there is a slight delay uh, to, uh, to wash out the, the light. Another super quick uh, tutorial about uh, using Marketplace find some lighting and then load it into UE5. Uh, so basically if you go to uh, search, type light, you can find a lot of uh, resource asset related to the lighting. Uh, they are really, really awesome if you want to dig into it. Uh, for today, I just want to show you some really good free stuff. Uh, so here, if you go to free, you can see some package. This is the one I actually want to download. Uh, this is called IES Lighting. So in my last tutorial, I covered uh, what is IES Light Profile, uh, which is a, a really accurate, fiscally accurate uh, way to calculate distribution of intensity. Um, but uh, here is a package. If you don't have uh, two motion, you can actually download this. Um, this one, I, at this point of time, is support uh, the older version of Unreal, um, but I think I will give a try for UE5. I think this probably, oh, it's actually can support UE5. Never mind, so that's good. So I will go ahead, download, and add it to my project. Since it is free, I will just go straight uh, to project, and I can find my current project, which is this guy. And then you will just put an asset directly into the project. Okay, so this is actually not very big, only 90 megabits. As soon as uh, this is um, loaded into <coughs> your project, you can go ahead and launch your project. The nice thing about this, I just want to show you really quick, is um, besides IES lighting, it also has some animated light, which I think is really nice. Uh, you can see the lighting is changing the angles. Uh, is uh, uh, is really cool effects. Okay, so if you wanna take advantage of this IES lighting and animated lighting. All right, so I will go ahead and launch my Unreal. After uh, this is loaded, I will go here and I will run. Okay. Uh, once it's launching, you can also check your content folder. You see this is actually the one called a light profile pack, right? This is just being loaded a few minutes ago. So whenever you download or install an asset into your current project, it usually can mean as a folder. Uh, that also means in the future, if you do want to 
give this to another person, um, you can basically just copy this whole folder, uh, light profile pack folder, then you can paste into another project folder. Okay, so just make sure it's under content. Uh, you usually see the file is like a U map, which is a level, and also you see some folders. Uh, in this case, there's a bunch of material. It's called a U asset. Okay, profile. This is also U asset file. Function are also U asset. Function allow you to do animation, animated lights. Okay, so I'm in, and then I will go ahead open a content browser. I will just simply dock the layout, and I will check how this new folder showed up called the Light Profile Pack. Uh, here's a level you can ignore uh, if you don't want to worry about it. Uh, or you can just open, just take a look at what this level uh, show you. It probably gonna recompile the shaders because uh, we have lots of new material, uh, like animated lighting material. So this will take a take a few seconds or minutes. Continue. After I open this level, you can take a quick look. Uh, some of these lights, right, this is the spotlight, has this property called um, light functions. And here you have this light function material, which is animated material. Okay. Uh, also have all kinds of IES profile. You can, you know, definitely dig into. Uh, there's no much difference from the Twin Motion library. Uh, so here if you go to the properties and then under the IES right you can see this IES texture uh, which if you do browse you can see there is a bunch of textures here okay so for me I'm really interested about the animation of the light uh, so maybe let's go ahead find the animated light uh, there are a bunch of them here uh, maybe let's just start with this one okay so in the property you can see it's linked directly into a function right it's not IES and this is called the light function and if you click uh, browse you can basically see under this folder uh, materials this is actually all animated material um, nice thing about Unreal is if you roll over our cursor on top of this material you can see this material gonna be previewed as an animated render. Okay, that's really ni nice. All right, so how we can use it in our scene? Um, it's really simple. You just need to set up a light function of your light. Uh, keep in mind this light, uh, this is a spotlight, but you can do point light, you can do other lights as well. And this light is defined as movable. Uh, so it's behave uh, quite differently as a static light. Uh, I guess you can also do this as a but if you change to static, you know, you see that animation is gone. Right? Um, I have another tutorial discuss the difference between the static, stationary, and the movable. Uh, so you can maybe refer to that tutorial in a in the future. Okay. Um, if I go back to stationary, just make sure you relink the uh, the animated light. Okay. So I will do this through my level. So I will open my level which is the main, um, well, which one is my level? Yeah, I think it's the main Rhino file. Oh no, that's a different file. Sorry, I just need to find my level. Um, maybe it's this, okay, yeah, so just main. All right, so I want to add this animated light, right? Maybe I want to just customize this light uh, to make it as animated light. So in the properties, you can see this light is defined as a stationary uh, stationary light. So that means you can actually animate. Uh, you can also uh, create uh, more complicated behaviors. So now I just need to go all the way down, find a location called light function, and then I need to load a material. Right? If you recall the materials under that folder, light profile pack, lighting, function, material. And I want to maybe loading some animated, you know, uh, features. So one way to do that is you just drag and drop into the light function material. So that's it. You have this lighting being animated. Um, another way you can do that is if you roll over to a light, 
right? Select this material, then you click this load button. It's called use selected asset. Then that will be uh, loaded. Uh, so either way would work. Uh, really depends on your pre-reference. Okay. So now um, I think what is the grid? Yeah, there's a bunch of uh, animated lights here. Lines, sparkles. Well, I think let's try this lines. Oh, that's pretty nice. So let's go ahead and play. So now it doesn't trigger, but if I get closer to the entry, now you see the lights on, it's animated. Uh, that's pretty exciting. Right? So this is animated light. Um, if you do exaggerate uh, this lighting a little bit more, you can do, you know, increase its intensity. Um, I think we can just simply to uh, intensify through the values. Right now it's 8, but let's do, I don't know, 80, 10 times. And I give a little bit color. <clears throat> I don't know, purple, and play, right? So now I have this, then I go to the lobby, it triggered that light, okay? That's quite exciting. So yeah, play with it. Um, you can use as many animated light as you want. Uh, so for example, this green one, I can, you know, I, ha I can have uh, IES profile, but also I can have animated lighting uh, overlay on top. So for example, this I can load it, right? So the green will be loaded there. Um, let me see any, anything else, triangle. Right. Well, if you do want to edit this light, you can you know, double click, uh, you can do some editing. I think that's good. So we play, and then you trigger that. Then one seconds later, you see that green color will be triggered as well. And then that green color will show, uh, will disappear. I'll make this green a little bit stronger. Um, yeah, I was just bouncing up the intensity to. Or if you have too many, you can just type intensity. Yeah, so right now it's two, I would give 20. Yeah, so that's a much stronger green light now. <clears throat> there we go, you see that green light. Okay, I think that's all for how to make animated light uh, into Unreal uh, using this free. If you do want to customize uh, this lighting, uh, you know, for example, this is the animated material. If you double click, you can see this is basically a material associated with a black and white texture. Uh, this texture you can do it in Photoshop uh, and in program and then bring in. It has this animated feature called the rotator, which control the UV. UV basically control the projection of image to a material. So this one is animated based on the time. So here you can see the speed, you can see the, uh, the, the coordination X and Y. So for instance, if I want to speed up, I can do 2.5, and then this speed will be much faster, right? So you can basically save it. So now if I uh, apply this to my green light, the green light gonna move really fast. So we can we can do a test. Um, so this is called uh, star burst, right? So for the green light, which is right here, I will change the um, uh, the profile, uh, not profile, the light function to, uh, is this the green light? Oh, this one is a green light. I will change the green light to starburst. Okay, and also probably I think I will just get rid of the IES because IES will kind of block out some of these uh, intensities. I will just do a none. Can I do a none? 
I will do a reset to default, right? So you can see the, the color is kind of animating really, really fast. So now if I go trigger it, right? Now you see the green light is being triggered as well, right? So if you want to control the speed, right, just you know go inside the uh, animated material, then you can control the rotator. I think that's it. This is how you do animated lighting.